Hey, if you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, uh, just like this. All right, all right, all right. So uh, it's just another quick video. Um, this one, uh, it's about uh, storing the comics. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go over a subtopic of that, which is uh, temperature and humidity. I uh, already went over like as far as light, right? Uh, how I put a UV protection on my windows and I have shutters and, you know, curtains. Uh, but I didn't really go uh, in depth as, as far as uh, temperature and humidity. And I, I found out a, a couple of interesting things and I have my own solution here that I'm going to share. Um, hopefully, you know, it'll work for you or it's some good ideas. So yeah, uh, let's see it. All right, all right. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you've seen my videos before, uh, you're probably familiar uh, with the way I store my books. Uh, I had a video about how I made those wall frames and then the, the shelves and uh, the cabinet. Uh, but I didn't really go much in, you know, in depth as far as uh, temperature and humidity. And uh, I actually did my own research on it and I'll put it here on the side some uh, information for you. Um, I talked to other collectors, um, read some stuff on the internet from the American uh, Library Association, Library of Congress, and you're gonna see like nobody has like a one set number, they usually give you a range, and that's pretty much what it is. Uh, it's as good as I was able to get so. If you have any other ideas, just write below and I'll go over it. Uh, but this is my setup. Uh, I have uh, some books on the wall and I have most of my books on the cabinet. And uh, a couple of things that I found out is like, it's not just the temperature and humidity uh, in your room, right? This is a big room, but inside the room, you may have different temperatures. Uh, depending if it's how close you are, or as far as humidity too, how close you are to the windows, how close you are to the corner, or how high you're um, storing your books, uh, where you're putting them, what kind of cabinet. So there's different factors as well. Uh, if you remember this thing that I tried before during my UV video, I was trying to see, you know, how to protect the book from UV. And this is the UV film, if you've seen that video that I use to put in front of the slabs and that provides additional UV protection. Uh, that's pretty cool. But while I was doing that, see, I put it by the window and look how bad this, <laughs> this thing looks. And that's just the condensation, uh, uh, condensation by the window there. I mean, the room, that room was just like this one. Um, it was about 70 degrees, 65 to 70. Humidity about 50%, but sometimes when you have change in temperature, especially if you're close to a window where you get sunlight and all that, you can get things like this. And I was kind of surprised, I didn't know it's gonna get that bad, but it did. Uh, so I, I kind of learned from that. <laughs> um, but yeah, going back here, how I store my books, I, I, I really love this cabinet. Uh, you can pull it and it fits 10 books at the time and I got a couple of sensors uh, this one I can't really say I recommend it but I, I had to try it is the uh, you can see it's the GoV I put some information on the side and it gives me the temperature and the humidity inside 
Uh, it's not really that accurate. Uh, actually, the humidity is going up because I had to turn on the humidifier. Uh, but it, it's another source of uh, information for me. Uh, the other thing I did, uh, this is the Honeywell um, thermostat. And again, I'll put the information here on the side so you can actually see the thermostat. And the reason I got this one is because it has those little sensors like that that you can put in a separate room. So you can have the thermostat control, I guess, the temperature based on the sensor, not on the thermostat location. Some thermostats, you know, it's based on the location of the thermostat. This one I can have the thermostat on the hallway, uh, but the sensor here is the one that I want to be used to control the temperature because this room is the most important part for me as far as temp temperature control. So that's the reason I got that thermostat. Uh, it wasn't that bad. I, I don't remember how much I paid, but I I'll put the information here on the side and you can do your own research. Uh, this Go V uh, sensor here, I think it was like 15 bucks on Amazon. Um, see it. Um, so I have about 66 degrees. In about 46 uh, humidity. Um, I usually set it at 40. Uh, I had to turn off the the humidifier, and this is the the dehumidifier I use. Um, it's something you know you can also get on Amazon. Uh, I have it off. It's kind of loud. That's why I turned it off. Uh, we'll just turn it on for now, so you can see. It. And I have set it at 40. And I keep it like that. Yeah, every couple of days, it has an uh, area here that the water goes. And every couple of days, I just take it out and remove the water. I was actually surprised how much water was in there. I didn't think I was going to get that much water. But yeah, so I use a combination of uh, the thermostat, uh, you know, the regular thermostat, uh, the sensor here and the dehumidifier um, and as far as temperature if you're wondering yeah well, isn't this video about like hey what should i do as far as temperature and humidity um, as you probably can see i'll put the information here on the side again um, they usually look for like as far as humidity 30 percent to 50 percent again a lot of times it's optimal uh, op optimal <laughs> conditions uh, a lot of collectors you know they won't be able to maintain that a hundred percent of the time but one thing that I found in common uh, from everywhere I read and the research I done is that this change in temperature the change in humidity is actually more harmful than just the humidity level and the temperature by itself um, and by that I mean like if you I keep my books here, let's say at 40% in 60 degrees. If you have a change, like let's say I take it outside and it's a 95 degree weather outside and I just grab the book from here and take it outside and when it's, you know, humidity 70% and I, I don't know, uh, temperature 95 degrees, you're going to do a lot of damage to the book. So that's actually far more harmful than just not be able to keeping a set temperature for a long period of time. Um, and, and that's what I didn't think about, but when you actually think about it, it makes sense. Uh, it's the change of the temperature and the humidity that actually does a lot of the damage as well. So I keep them here uh, most of the time. And if you're, supposed to, if you're going to move it somewhere else, you're supposed to deacclimate them. Uh, let them slowly change temperature and conditions, I guess. So that's another thing that I, I had to learn from this whole thing. Uh, I have some cool books. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 6, uh, Sinister 6 cover. It's by far one of my favorites. Uh, and I want them to be, in, you know, maintained and taken care of, so uh, that's one of the things I did. So between the UV, uh, the temperature, those are the two main things you can kind of do to take care of your books. Uh, okay? 
So uh, I hope uh, you find this information I posted here and you saw on the video useful. Um, I'll try to do some more videos about it. Uh, I've been doing some about the rare books and I usually try to do like five at a time. So I'll continue that later. Um, and if you have any other questions or suggestions, let me know. Uh, I'm getting new books all the time. So uh, I'll, I'll do some about the new books I'm getting as well. But yeah, any questions or comments or any tips or anything that I said that does not make sense, uh, let me know and I'll get back to you in the comments below. Uh, I, I like to share these videos and hear back from people or watch other people's videos about how they take care of their uh, comics because that's how I, I learn. Okay, okay, uh, see you next time uh, and thank you.